And at this station, we will be... Go, uh, if you guys go ahead and pick up your weapons, I'm sorry. <coughs> um, we'll be going over IDs and UXOs. What they are, what they could possibly look like, what to do about them, and that's, that's pretty much about it. Can an FTP cadet tell me what IED stands for? Cadet Mitchell. Improvised Explosive Device. That's exactly right. If you couldn't hear, it's Improvised Explosive Device. Can possibly a 100 point out what may be an improvised explosive device in here? Yes. Um, the Coca Cola cans and the Dr. Pepper. And exactly. Something like a, Coke, a soda can. It shady looks homemade. You know, not good. Some wires coming out. Can an FTP cadet tell me what UXO stands for? That's okay. I actually got it wrong earlier today, too. <laughs> Unexploded ordinance. Uh, would a 100 like to point out what would probably be unexploded ordinance? Would that would be um, more so the the blue little bulb there, maybe? Maybe the bulb. Um, I think the obvious ones in here would be the shells. The shells. Um, because those were meant to blow up, but just <laughs> look like they haven't. <laughs> so that's what unexploded ordinance would probably look like. But it could be other stuff like the bulb. All right, so we teach two types of IEDs in ROTC. Does an FTP cadet remember what they are? Um, did you already answer a question? Mm -hmm. Cadet Brancy? Um, command detonated and time delayed. Yes, time delayed and command detonated. So <coughs> would someone like to point out what could be used to command detonate an ID or a, uh, yes, Mitchell? The cell phone? Yes, the cell phone, a radio-like thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the, the, button. Button. the red button. <laughs> <laughs> the big red button. button. Um, and then obviously a timer would imply time delayed. Um, it's waiting for something to go off. Alright. So that's what they are, the two we teach in RUTC. The next thing we'll cover will be your nine line. Um, make sure you're on the UXO side, not the medevac side. So I will run through real quick um, what they mean and then I will ask one of you to pretend calling one as though there is an ID in front of us. Date and time, explanatory, um, or when you call a nine line, you want to be quick, accurate. You're going to say what line it is, the information, break, next line. So it'll be line one, date time, break, line two, location, break. So make sure you know that information before you're on the radio. So line two is location, line three, how you're contacting them, if you're ra if it's radio, what frequency, phone, which, what's your number. The type, line four is type of ammunition. Does someone remember, for line five, does someone remember what MEC <coughs> stands for? What type of contamination? Nuclear That's, biological chemical? There you go, okay. yeah, nuclear biological okay. chemical. If there is contamination and it is one of those three, specify which one it is. If there is not contamination, just tell them there's no contamination. Line six, what resources are threatened? Line seven, how is it impacting your mission? Break, line eight, what are you doing about it? Break, line nine, how important is it for your bomb squad to take care of this in a timely manner? If it's threatening a lot of things, probably pretty quickly. All right, so, Let's say that this Coke can is the ID that we are calling in. Um, would someone like to volunteer to try to call a nine line? Okay. Cadet Mitchell, go ahead. Uh, line one, uh, White Hole, or date two, right? Line one, September 8th, White Hole, break. Line two, uh, sound off. A little bit. Ready? Wait, sound, sound off. Sound off, like yeah. be louder. Oh, okay. Line one, uh, line one September 8th, White Hole, break. Line two, uh, radio frequency, break. Line three, uh, A, break. Line four, uh, A, break. Line five, uh, what is litter and ambulatory? Oh, so, you're on the medevac one. Oh, oh yeah. I'm on the one. <laughs> okay, my bad then. Yeah. Uh, line one, September 8th, uh, Whitehall, break. Uh, line two, uh, all the way in the, the back behind the, 
behind a house in the field break uh line three radio frequency break line four uh dropped break uh line five uh no mbc break uh line six uh did i say like our group is threatened here or something? yeah you That's could say like the um, okay uh yeah team is threatened break six people yeah six people uh line seven uh, you don't have a mission, okay. so you just make something up. Uh, halting our, our, our uh, march break, uh, line eight. Uh, could I say, like, doing the five C's right here or something like yeah, that? Yeah, that's... Break, uh, line nine, uh, immediate break. Okay, that was pretty good. In a real scenario, you're going to have more information, so you want to make sure you're saying it louder, mm. faster, and you know what you're going to say. Mm. Uh, Cadet Wichkowski will now do five C's. Okay, so um, for you guys in FTP, can you tell me what the five C's are? Con confirm, clear, cordon, check, control. Okay, good job. It is, so for those of you that didn't hear that, it is confirm, clear, cordon, check, control. And the five C's are a method developed to safely handle or dispose IEDs when you're out in the field. And I'm going to go through one by one of what those mean. So confirm, when you're out in the field, an IED can be almost anything. It can be a bomb inside of a car. You know, there could be a bomb in some sketchy looking trash on the side of the road, you know, anything like that. So as soon as you, when you're, you know, marching, when you're progressing, if you see something that might be an IED, call that out immediately. So you're gonna confirm it. Immediately after calling it, um, you know, calling it out, you're going to clear the area, which is the second C. Can anybody tell me what the minimum safe distance is that you should... Go ahead. 500 feet. Yes. So it's 500 to 2,000 feet. Obviously, when we're here at Whitehall, we don't have 500 to 2,000 feet to work with, but you guys will simulate that you're maintaining a safe distance away from the bomb. Then you're going to court on the area. After you... Uh, once that area is clear and you know no one's in an immediate danger you are going to have to set up some kind of marking to make sure that nobody goes into that area where the active th bomb is uh, you're you can set up some flags move some objects if you don't do anything else at least you know put down some sticks so you can you know if i go over this line i'm not safe then you're going to check when you check, you're going to be checking for two things. One, where there is one IED, there may be another. So, you know, chances are, if, if you're growing through a field, they're, they're going to try to put multiple IEDs down. So if you catch the one, they'll blow you up in a second. Two, you are going to be checking that the person who put it down isn't in the area. Because also chances are that if somebody put an IED down, they're going to be waiting for it to go off. And um, the f last but not least, the fifth C is control. After you call that nine line in, like uh, Cadet Clark talked about, uh, either a bomb squad is gonna sh show up or you're gonna be given new orders to um, just court on the area, make sure that everything's safe and keep going, you know, mark it, something like that. But essentially you're gonna be, the bomb is taken care of and you're gonna, it's controlled and now you're gonna progress to whatever objective you're doing. And just to add to uh, Cadet Clark's nine line, um, when you call in a nine line, you are talking on a radio frequency. Essentially what that means is that you're the only person talking during that spe specific moment. There may be other squads, there may be other teams or whatever that are trying to call in nine lines, but they're not talking because you're the one talking. It is very important that, be f first of all, only one person calls in a nine line at a time. It's easy during these exercises, you know, in the chaos, multiple people try to call in a nine line. You know, that's not gonna work. One person calls a nine line in and make sure that you know what you're gonna say. If you have a card that's laminated, you could write on a card and, you know, think about what you're gonna say. But, you know, and you're gonna go, uh, line one, date and time, break. Line two, location, break. Thing, it's got to be that quick because all the time that you're spending talking uh, giving the line line somebody who needs medical attention or a squad 
that got blown up by an IED that they didn't see, you know, they're waiting on you to finish. So that's all I have. All right, so now we're going to move into a scenario. Does anyone want to be the team lead? All right, I saw your hand first. Um, so Cadet Mitchell will be your team lead. You are, you've already learned a lot of information, which is an advantage for you. Uh, you are to form up however your leader tells you to, that direction. You are to clear the field that you know, and you know that there are common, it is known to have IEDs in this field. And your objective is to cross safely. You have five minutes. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so we're gonna uh, uh, form up right over here in uh, wedge, wedge formation. Okay. And then we're gonna, uh, wait, which way are we caught? Just going that way, kind of? Are we, are we, that way? Okay. Here's the point. Keep your eyes open. Wedge formation, wedge formation. Follow the two lines. Okay. Alright, let's walk forward. I see something. Oh. What do you see, Rafi? Check out that camera. Let's, let's, uh, take the box. Um, what do you see? Right there. Check out that safe box. It looks like a, it's about one foot diameter. Okay. Uh, Alright, so I, I think it's an ID. Uh, let's try to circle around, uh, make sure the area is clear. Uh, everyone just try to, try to circle around the IND, make sure no one, no civilians or anything, you know, gets around in the area. Uh, just pretend like we don't exist. Can I get you to call in the 9 line to yeah. uh, tell them about the uh, ID? Alright, be loud. Alright. Line 1, September 8th, uh, Whitehall, line break, line 2, sure sure ID location, Whitehall. Uh, about west from the front of the field. L break. Line three, contact method, radio frequency. Break. Line four, placed. Break. Line five, no known or suspected NBC contamination. Break. Line six, uh, resources threatened, personnel. Break. Line seven, impact on mission, affects us finishing our mission. Break. Line eight, pro protective measures taken. Uh, we cordoned on the area and cleared the ID. Break. Line nine, recommended priority, immediate break. All right, Megan. All right, I want to hear what you guys thought went well, uh, what could have gone better, and then we will run another scenario if we have a few more minutes. So what do you think went well? Go ahead first. Um, I think... We kind of understood what we were doing as far as the wedge formation. Um, I had another thing, but you can come back to me. You can come back. Well, I was, it wasn't as well, like, well, I think everyone did good to, like, listen to commands and stuff really well. Uh, yeah, I was going to say something about weakness, really. All right. Um, mm, go ahead. I'm going to say something that you guys could have done better. Uh, sense of urgency. Yeah. Uh, Ransky, you got super close to that ID. And you know, you guys kind of, you guys kind of just stood there uh, until you dealt with it. You don't have to say, "Oh, there's an ID here," because that's too obvious. But say some word like "lightning," "thunder," something like that, mm -hmm. and yell it out. Mm -hmm. And I think you guys should should kind of like immediately issue that command to clear it, because you, you know you're close to a bomb. You don't want to be thinking about where it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, something else that you guys could have done better is keeping the 360 security. Yeah. You did set up. A perimeter which is good but you had people looking towards the ID or you know you kind of had people who were very lax you know lax the day school mm -hmm. well they, they were staying around make sure that if you're keeping that circle you are actually like ready mm -hmm. you know for a threat and that you're looking out because there's no reason for you to be looking at the ID you're waiting you're looking for another threat mm -hmm. okay. um, the only thing I had about calling the nine line is when you say which line it is, you don't have to say the title of the line, you just give them that information. So in, like for instance, line four is type of ammunition. You don't need to say type of ammunition, you can just say placed, dropped, projected, whichever it is. Um, other than that, that was pretty good. Simple stuff, be loud, uh, sense of urgency. Those are all things that make a difference. Would someone else like to be in charge? Could it, Rancy? All right, we can move to the scenario. 